Hi, and welcome to this week's weekly wrap-up for Friday, August 30th, 2024. My, how this month went quickly, and September promises to go even faster with school back in and all the events that are about to transact. Uh, this week, as you know, we had no shows planned, except we had a last-minute one that you're probably seeing by now, uh, the wonderful Miss Prophet Carolyn Dennis, who we had in our show early this month, uh, has asked me to come on and do a cursory overview of the mechanics of the reset, many of which you are already familiar but for her audience to kind of give them a reprise of what most of you and many of you already know, but it was still a great show and, and uh, she does hear from the Lord and, and we were excited to get her uh, musings from the Lord on these different subjects as it all helps us get to the finish line at the end. Next week, we're starting off the new month. We have some great shows to kick things off. We have Bill Holter bringing him back for this critical time. Derek Johnson, as always, for his insights on what's going on, particularly geopolitically with the potential election, as well as the venerable S.G. Anon, who always gives great articulation on the events at hand. And now let's get started on the headlines. <clears throat> Ernst & Young said is cutting ties with many U.S. public companies as audit clients a move to revamp its audit practice and improve the quality of its work. 84 public uh, companies exited EY as audit clients between January 1st of last year through August 15th of this year, According to data from research firm Idealgen Audit Analytics, the firm also added 21 clients in that time. That is at least 50 departures more than in any of the three large accounting firms, including Deloitte & Touche, KPMG, and PricewaterhouseCoopers during the same period. In contrast, with EY's net loss of 63 clients, Deloitte, KPMG, and PwC had net arrivals of 46, 13, and 4, respectively, during that period. An Australian linen, linen and homewares company has gone into administration after nearly 40 years. Lorraine Lee Linen had administrators appointed on Monday. The retailer is still trading and has launched a 50% off sale all the, all the items within the website. Family-owned business is headquartered in Melbourne and was set up and established in 1986. Mediterranean restaurant chain Roti on Friday filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection the filing was meant to facilitate Roti's efforts to, quote, seek new investors or purchasers on an accelerated time frame while reorganizing its finances, ensuring that Roti locations across Chicago, Minneapolis, and the Washington, D.C. metro areas would continue to operate, according to the Mediterranean restaurant chain. Roti submitted its position to the U.S. Bankruptcy Court for the Northern District of Illinois. <clears throat> Subway has closed 23 shops across two states after a bank hacking nightmare resulted in hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of losses. The sandwich chain shuttered almost two dozen locations in Washington and Oregon with little warning earlier this month. BurgerFi, a popular fast casual burger chain is currently hemorrhaging cash and the company fears it may be forced to file for chapter 11 bankruptcy in the very near future. The Florida based burger chain which also owns the pizza chain Anthony's Cold Fire Pizza, had only 4.4 million of revenue as of August 14th, according to a filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Park Hotels and Resorts stopped making payments on a $725 million loan on two hotels, and the properties are now in receivership. Problems in another metropolitan city have led Park Hotels and Resorts to close another of its hotels across San Francisco Bay and Oakland. After 56 years in business, Park Hotels and Resorts has reportedly shuttered its Hilton Oakland Airport location as of August 25th, as the neighborhood surrounding the property near the Oakland Airport has deteriorated in recent years. John's Island restaurant Collectivo is to close on August 31st. Collectivo opened on John's Island September 6th of last year. The restaurant came from Chef Alex Yellen, who was always drawn to Mexican food as he grew up in Arizona, studied abroad in Mexico, and his first cooking job was at a Mexican restaurant. Major automaker announces significant layoffs in Michigan. The majority of the layoffs are centered at the GM's Technical Center in Warren, Michigan, a major hub that employs over 21,000 people. Affected workers were informed at the beginning of the week, sparking immediate concerns about the future of the tech center and the broader GM workforce. Redfin lays off employees as of Wednesday, GeekWire has learned. The Seattle-based company confirmed the cuts and said that fewer than 100 people were impacted as of now. The layoffs affected Redfin's concierge service, which helps homeowners improve their home's appeal before putting it on the market. 
a Japanese fast food giant has announced it will be closing up shop in Australia. <clears throat> MOS Burger will close its three Australian outlets by the end of August. It's in bad news for dedicated customers of the popular restaurant. The Love Convenience Store in downtown Huntersville closes its doors in North Carolina after several decades of service to its respective community. Behind the scenes, as a legendary Vegas Strip, Picasso closes after almost 26 years in operation. Outback Steakhouse, known for its iconic bloom and onion and hearty steaks, is making a big change in 2024. The popular chain has announced that it will be closing stores in eight states across the country. The eight states that will see closures include Pennsylvania, Ohio, New York, Illinois, Florida, Texas, California, and Georgia. Albertsons may have to sell itself, close stores, and cut jobs if it cannot merge with Kroger. The supermarket chain argues that they need to get bigger and better in order to compete with Walmart, Amazon, and Costco. They also say that through the divestiture of nearly 600 stores to the CNS wholesale, wholesale grocers, they will be creating a viable competitor within the supermarket space. The trial is expected to last until September 13th in Portland, Oregon, federal court in front of Judge Adrian Nelson. <clears throat> Root and Bone, the Southern inspired restaurant from chefs Jeff McGinnis and Janine Booth have closed its South Miami location after five years in business. This closure was announced Monday in a statement on Instagram from the Chef Partners and Grove Bay Hospitality Group. The restaurant known for its high end takes on Southern Comfort Food opened in 2019 as a collaboration between the top chef alumni and Grove Bay Group and it quickly became a neighborhood favorite. The space was known as the glass farmhouse for its high ceilings and open kitchen. Shake Shack, nice uh, shack on the NYSC network, just closed on Tuesday that it will close nine underperforming shacks after evaluating its portfolio of company owned and operated restaurants. The company said the locations are underperforming at the shack level and due, partially due to changes in the trade area and in some cases are negatively impacting other shacks within the proximity by cannibalizing sales. These shacks are not projected to provide acceptable returns in the foreseeable future. As a result of the evaluation, the company is determined to close nine company-owned and operated shacks within California, Ohio, and Texas. LaRue Creek Food Corporation filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection on August 27th in the U.S. Bankruptcy Court, Colorado District, Denver Division Office. The company reported between $1 million and $10 million in both debts and assets. The company also reported between 50 and 99 creditors. Its filing does not include a financial financing bailout plan. Dallas to close four top restaurants within the end of August. They include Trumpo, Bar None, Green Door Public House, and Sugar Factory. A beloved Cuban restaurant is shutting down after roughly 45 years in business in Orange County, California. Felix Continental Cafe was buzzing with hungry customers on Wednesday as its fan base indulged in their last chance to savor the restaurant's flavors. Owner Carlos Calderon cited economic challenges as being the reason for the business uh, decision to close. Now for the commodities and crude oil prices, as of the time of this broadcast, gold is up at a, a currently all-time high at $2,554.40. Silver holding just under the $30 mark at $29.57 and Brent crude oil at $80.35. Now to the notable deaths and resignations. <clears throat> According to Reuters, Zurich, Nestle shares tumbled early on Friday following the abrupt departure of CEO Mark Schneider from the world's biggest food maker and his replacement by company veteran Laurent Frey. Schneider's surprise exit was announced late on Thursday following a board meeting that put an end to the near eight year tenure of the 58 year old German, the first company outsider to lead Nestle in nearly a century. According to Beijing Reuters, as of August 25th, Bank of China Vice Chairman and President Liu Jin resigned for personal reasons, effective on Sunday, the bank said. The state owned lender said its board had approved Chairman Xi Hajiao to serve as acting president, according to a filing released by the bank on Sunday. San Francisco Reuters, the sudden resignation of a high profile Intel board member came after differences with CEO Pat Gelsinger and other directors over what the director considered the US company's bloated workforce, risk averse culture and lagging artificial intelligence strategy, according to three sources familiar with the matter. 
<clears throat> Adam Verdugo is stepping down as executive producer of CBS Evening News alongside Nora O'Donnell amid a pending overhaul of the broadcast. His final day at CBS will be September 6, the network confirmed. When H&R Block's chief financial officer, Tony Bowen, retires next month, he will leave the tax preparation company on a high note. Kansas City, Missouri-based company stock has been on a tear, rising almost 60% over the past year. Profit has increased in recent years due to a combination of steady revenue growth and a focus on controlling costs, according to Bowen. And the company has allocated capital to buybacks, boosting its earnings per share. In the fiscal year ending June 30th, earnings per share rose 16% from a year earlier to 4.14% profit rose to 8% which equates for $595.3 million. $595 million. J. Michael Klein, Fandango, Fandango co-founder who changed the movie-going experience, dies at 64. George Roden, 97, the last living member of the Jamaican 4x400 meter relay squad at the Helsinki Olympics has passed away. With the relay victory, he also bagged the men's 400 meter individual title at the 1952 Olympics. Until now, it has remained one of the rarest achievements ever to be etched in the 400 meter event by a non-American male athlete. According to Bloomberg, Leonard Riggio, the feisty entrepreneur who turned a single Barnes and Noble store into the world's largest bookstore has died. He was 83. He died on Tuesday, the company announced in a post on X, his leadership spanned decades during which he not only grew the company, but also nurtured a culture of innovation and a love for reading, the company said. Citing his family, the Associated Press reported that Riggio had battled Alzheimer's disease. <clears throat> Shirley Ann Field, a renowned actress of the 1960s, passed away at the age of 87, celebrated for her roles in iconic films such as Field's Legacy and the film industry remains unforgettable. A rugby player has died after he suddenly collapsed at a gym, leading to his discovery that he had a serious health issue. Welsh scrum half Calvin Knapp passed away at the age of 31. His former team, Landaff RFC, announced on Tuesday. The sad news came tears after he was diagnosed with a brain tumor. The former, former scrum half had initially collapsed in the gym and thought he had pulled a muscle, but scans later showed he had a tumor on the left side of his brain, according to Wales Online. Catherine Riviera died overnight at a retirement home in the French city of Marguerite's Le Monde reports, citing a statement from her representatives to Agency France Presse, the lion-born singer was 82. Riviera was born in 1941 to Portuguese parents before her career in music. She appeared in Jean-Luc Godard's 1963 film Les Cabaneurs. Throughout the 1960s, she recorded a number of singles and became a Yee Yee star, eventually releasing Catherine Ribeiro and Two Bees, the debut album from her group with multi-instrumentalist Patrice Moulet in 1969. Baltimore Ravens offensive line coach Joe D'Alessandres has died, the team announced on Sunday. He was 70. D'Alessandres was hospitalized earlier this month due to an acute illness. He underwent surgery earlier this summer and experienced complications. Teresa Chambers, a talent booker at the Mercury Lounge, Bowery Ballroom, and many other venues whose career reached back to Studio 54 in New York, died on August 11th, a representative for her family confirms to Variety. No cause of death was announced. She was 64. Acclaimed jazz guitarist Russell Malone, best known for his work in Jimmy Smith, Diana Krall, and Harry Connick Jr. died suddenly in Tokyo Friday, August 23rd at the age of 60. Malone had been touring uh, Japan alongside pianist Donald Vega and double bassist Ron Carter as the Golden Striker Trio had just finished a performance at the Blue Note Tokyo when he suffered a heart attack. Roger Cook, the landscaper who brought his expertise and problem solving solutions to PBS's popular home renovation show, This Old House, for nearly 40 years has died. He died at age 70, was announced on the show's official website. Charles, the Wolfman Lynn, the great character who yelled, paper at the top of his lungs thousands of times inside the Indianapolis Motor Speedway has died at the age of 71. Hetty Jones, a poet and author who, with her husband, Leroy Jones, who later became the incendiary poet and playwright, Amiri Bakara, made her household a hub for beat writers and other artists, but who was often described as a footnote in the rise of her famous spouse as the white wife was disavowed, died on August 13th in Philadelphia. She was 90. <clears throat> Betty Cook, an artist and designer who rose to national prominence, 
while crafting modernism sculptural jewelry that was acquired by museums was sold out of her trend-setting Baltimore store, died on August 13th in her home in Townsend, Maryland. She was 100. Lieutenant Arthur J. Gregg, an Army logistics specialist who retired in 1981 as the highest ranking black officer in the US military and last year saw a Fort Long named for the top Confederate general rechristened in his honor, died August 22nd at a hospital in Richmond. He was 96. Mixed martial artist world is mourning the loss of Benji Roddick. Roddick, a UFC alum and longtime MMA veteran, has died at the age of 45, according to his family. Roddick's brother, Bo, announced Benji's passing in a statement on Facebook. No cause of death was released. Mariah Carey says her mom, Patricia Carey, and her sister, Allison Carey, died over the weekend on the same day. In a statement to Today.com, Mariah Carey said that while she lost her mom over the weekend and her sister passed in a tragic turn of events, she added that her heart is broken. Bloomberg announced that Jonathan Bloomer, chairman of Morgan Stanley International and one-time chief executive Prudential PLC, was confirmed among fatalities in the August 19th sinking of a luxury yacht off Italy. He was 70. His wife, Judy, was also among those who were killed. They had been guests on the super yacht Bayesian to mark the acquittal of British tech tycoon Mike Lynch at a trial in which Bloomer had been a defense witness. Nick J. Maletti was born in inner city Cleveland in 1931. By the 1970s, he owned three of the city's most prolific major professional sports franchises, the Cleveland Indians, the NBA's Cleveland Cavaliers, and the Crusaders of the World Hockey Association. After Maletti died on Tuesday at age 93, the Cleveland Plain dealer regaled him as the most energetic and imaginative promoter in Cleveland sports history. John Mayall, a towering figure in the world of blues, has passed away at the age of 90. Known for his immerse, excuse me, his immense influence and prolific output, Mayall was instrumental in shaping the British blues scene. His legacy includes mentoring legendary musicians such as Eric Clapton, Peter Green, and Mick Taylor. Leonard Hayflick, a biomedical researcher who discovered that normal cells can divide only a certain number of times, setting a limit on the human lifespan and frustrating would-be immortalists everywhere, died on August 1st at his home in Sea Ranch, California. He was 96. His son, Joel Hayflick, said the cause was pancreatic cancer. Jody Frisch, an accomplished communications executive with a career spanning decades in both Hollywood and Washington, D.C., died August 21st. First, after a short battle with pancreatic cancer, she was 68. Throughout her career, Frisch held key positions at organizations such as WGA, SAG-AFTRA, and the American Humane Association, BGR Group, and the National Foreign Trade Council. Actor and advertising genius Charlie Moss has died. He was 85. The late ad executive who helped promote and produce Successful campaigns, including I Heart New York tourism ads in the 70s, died of August 5th of a heart attack, his wife Susan Calhoun Moss confirmed to the New York Times. Rob Rabbit Pitts, who starred in Netflix auto renovation reality series Tex-Mex Motors, has died. He was 45. Pitts, who died on Sunday, left a final message for his fans in a video titled This Is Goodbye. His videographer Jeff confirmed the sad news, revealing that Pitts had been living with stomach cancer and died in hospice care. Jerry Taylor, whose open-hearted disclosures about the ravages of Alzheimer's were so striking that they made her a public spokeswoman for people with the disease, died on August 4th in Danbury, Connecticut. She was 81. Cause of complications of Alzheimer's, her husband, Jim Taylor, said. Pro wrestling legend Sid Udy, whose big frame and imposing presence uh, catapulted him to the top of the industry in the 1990s, has died. The coroner of Crittenden County, Arkansas, confirmed on Monday he was 63. Udy lived in Marion, a suburb 12 miles west of downtown Memphis, Tennessee. His wife, Sabrina Estes Udy, their son Gunner posted on the news of his father's passing on Facebook. He was also known as Sid Vicious. Cleveland Cavaliers lost their founding owner earlier this week, which we mentioned. Um, Don Wirt, a key player on the Detroit Tigers 1968 World Series championship team, has passed away at the age of 86, the Tigers announced his death on social media, expressing condolences to family and friends. Pete Wade, the Nashville's A-team guitarist who played on recordings such as Ray Price's Crazy Arms and George Jones's He Stopped Loving Her Today, died on Tuesday, August 27th, according to a statement from the Country Music Hall of Fame. He was 89. Born in Norfolk, Virginia, 
Herman Pete B. Wade moved to Nashville to pursue music at 19. He quickly gained a footing as part of Ray Price's band on the Grand Old Opry stage. He was one of Price's backing band, the Cherokee Cowboys, an all-star group that also included for a short time a young Willie Nelson on bass. Wade also toured with stars like Kitty Wells, Gene Shepard, Roger Miller, and more. Extremely sad news as Atsuko Tanaka, the iconic voice actor behind characters like Major Makoto Kusanagi, Chun Li, and Bayonetta passed away on Tuesday, August 20th. She was 61. Her son and fellow actor Hikaru Tanaka posted a statement to X in which he says his mother passed away peacefully in the wake of battling an undisclosed illness for a year. Robert A. Dubill, an award-winning executive editor with Gannett News Service and a unique forceful leader at USA Today since its inception in 1982, has died from complications after a fall. He was 88. Alex Hadias, hot rod pioneer and publisher, has passed away at age 102. Hadias lived um, a remarkable life, a hot rodder from a young age. He served as a World War II, as a B-17 crewman. He founded the SoCal Speed Shop that would go on to claim speed records, film documentaries, head car craft magazine, and help organize the automotive aftermarket into what it is today. He passed away last week and left a fantastic legacy of innovation, entrepreneurship, and investing in the hot rod community. Dr. Alistair Carruthers, a physician who is largely credited with making Botox a household name, has died. He was 79. According to a statement from the American Society for the Dermatologic Surgery, ASDS, of which he was president from uh, 2006 to 2007, Alistair passed away peacefully on August 19th after a courageous battle with Parkinson's disease. He's survived by his wife, Dr. Jean Carruthers, three children, and four grandchildren. Darren Beck, leader of the Texas metal outfit Pinkish Black has died. The band's longtime label, Relapse Records, shared the news on social media on Friday, August 23rd. Beck died from natural causes following medical complications. A label representative confirmed to Pitchfork he was 48. A school's oldest former pupil who was given a special birthday celebration when she turned 108 last year has died. Joan Kersey was a regular visitor to Ipswich High School, where she spoke about her time there, according to Dan Browning, head teacher of the independent school, which moved to nearby Wolverstone in the 1990s. Country singer Derek McHaffey has been laid to rest in Co Tyrone. The popular entertainer died suddenly in a hospital on Monday at the age of 78. Mourners gathered in rain at the graveyard outside Donna Cavie Church of Ireland Church in Fintona for a committal service on Wednesday afternoon. Noted anthropologist Dr. Helen Fisher, who led groundbreaking research in how the brain deals with love and passion, has died at the age of 79 after suffering endometrial cancer. Across a career spanning more than 50 years, Fisher was fascinated with brain function and its reflection within human behavior. She rose to fame in 2004 after a series of pioneering brain scans that showed how organs deal with sexual attraction, love, and rejection. John Connolly, founder of Oboes, has died. The outdoor industry veteran passed away on August 22nd after years of battling various cancers, Oboes confirmed in a statement. Autry Stevens spent 45 years building one of the nation's largest private oil builders and finally agreed to sell it for $26 billion this year, but died before the deal closed. And that concludes the resignations and uh, memorials of the deceased. Now, for my commentary for you folks, pretty simple this week. We are at a crossroads. We are coming to a dividing line. All of us have family or have worked with family to try to help and save them and wake them up, and they simply won't listen. This is a lesson, folks, that I had to learn many years ago in this movement. So I say this with the utmost respect. Let the dead bury the dead. Mentor Don Ward taught me that, kudos to him. Meaning, don't waste your time trying to change or control or effectuate people that won't listen, even if they're your blood family. Pray for them from a distance, as I do, and let the Lord do the rest. Help those who want to be helped and who are investing in the currency of their futures, time, money, effort, mind, body, soul. They're all around you. If you're doing that, just keep doing it. If you haven't yet, start with that because we're not going to be able to control people. We can't control their free will any more than they can control ours. And in the aftermath of this, 
there will be vindication, but prayer is the gateway to doing all of that. Folks, September and October in America and throughout the entirety of the world are going to look very strained and look very ugly and hypnotic for most people, but not for you because you have been researching, you have been prepared, you've been praying, you've been listening and paying attention and following directions. You will be the exception. You are going to be the light in this proverbial darkness we have talked about for many, many podcasts and our team has talked about it for many years to help said respective families that will not or cannot listen. You will, in essence, whether you want to or not, whether you're trying to or not, be a legend within your families. This will be your legacy for many, many generations down line for yourself, kids, grandkids, and future guardians to come. For this time is going to be a celebratory time for us um, but we will do it with grace and humility and how we can be of service, not an I told you so mentality. And remember this phrase, we've said it time and time again, but it bears repeating. When things seem at their worst, I will free my people. We're about to see that. Thank you so much, folks, for listening. Anything at breaking, we will always, as always, let you know what that is in a breaking news report. Otherwise, have a great and safe weekend. Enjoy the podcast with Carolyn and the shows that we have next week. God bless. Take care. Bye for now.